Sometimes you find a really good piece of software out there that just does the trick for you. In this case, OBS, online broadcast system software used for many people to stream or record or do tutorials. You add a whole bunch of different devices, backgrounds. You can do chroma key, luma keys, everything, cropping. But there's always like this little subtle thing that kind of slows you down and you're like, what the heck? So in this video tutorial, what I'm gonna teach you is how to do a couple things that have been kind of bothering me with OBS. I love the software a lot and I use it almost exclusively for recording live streams or from my computer at all. But there's a couple nuances like changing the scene names or how do you export and import different scenes. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to solve those problems and I think you'll like these little shortcuts. So stay tuned. Today, I'm gonna to show you guys a little bit about scenes and how to save them to a, to a uh, directory and recover them if you ever lose them, but also a couple of shortcut tips and tricks. Um, so as you can see on my left-hand side here, I'm gonna to switch to my OBS so now you can see it. And on the left-hand side, you can see I have a bunch of scenes over here and I, um, they're all meant for basically one overall epic theme. And that theme is Basically, how do I live stream this on YouTube or Facebook? So I kind of have it set up for when I want to do two by two windows or have multiple people on a screen. So let me show you a couple different screens. So I have my intro screen. If, if, if you want to see the intro, I can just click on that. And of course I could take myself, oh, uh, my shortcut keys I just changed so I have to get used to them a little bit more. But anyways, I meant to take myself off this way. Here we go. So I'm off and that's my intro screen. So now you see it. And then I have a two by two where it's it's showing my right hand monitor, but I wanted that on purpose because if I have a hangout session or a Skype session, I have it full screen and um, yeah, so it works with Skype or Zoom or anything because basically all full screen is the same. Of course, I'd move this out of the way and it's not quite the full screen. I kind of cropped it a little bit because on all of those different uh, applications, they're all slightly different, but I really wanted kind of the center of my screen and that's what I've got. So. Not quite there yet, but I've got you know various scenes that I can switch to easily with, with my hotkeys. And of course, I make it so that I can always take me off if I want to, right? So let's say this, because this is also my right-hand screen, but it's not the full screen. But if I have the Hangouts here, just sitting here, right? And there's more than one person, I really don't want me to be the biggest person, especially if there's two or three people. So I'm kind of just mediocre sized, you know? So that's, that's the idea behind that. Um, and of course, again, I can always take me off completely if I want to, but I don't typically do that. Um, let's see. I have a right hand monitor. That's the entire monitor. So uh, control shift right would be right. Control shift left would be left. See, here's my OBS. Here's my right hand monitor, the whole thing. Of course, I've got these overlays I got to get rid of. So S and F, control shift S and F gets rid of those for me. And so basically that's it. And then I have a full screen of myself right here so that I can always do control shift M for me and it just goes to me so I can talk to you guys like this. But really the main thing I wanna show you is, is when I go to the left screen here, I gotta get rid of these. I don't like, I think the overlays are a little too much, so they're automatically there, I gotta get rid of them. But we're looking at OBS now, and once you set all these scenes with all of your various sources and hotkeys and green screens, chroma keys, whatever you have on there, what you wanna do is you wanna save them. So go to your scene collection and you would just say, um, export right so I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this first so I have our tutorials and YouTube tech YouTube tech is typically the thing I do let me switch to our tutorials it's slightly different I have a few fewer fewer screens but I'm typically on this uh, monitor um, I'm typically in this mode right here which you can't see me so I have so my size is slightly different and I can actually put myself down here as well, but you notice the different sizes I have. Of course, I'm not cropped in the center. I, I'd fix that immediately. Usually my camera moves to different places. It depends on what I'm messing with. But I have this for a reason, so let me, let me show you why. I bring up R, this is a programming language, and so I do some tutorials on that, and I fit myself. Let's see, let's see if it pops up. That's bright. <laughs> Let me get rid of this guy right here. See how I have my Cradle to Grave logo on that as well? So when it records, it's that. 
And you'll see that I'm actually zoomed in. Uh, you can't see it also if I just do that, I'm back out. Uh, let me move my chair over the right way here. Okay, so now I'm in the center, right? So this is my R. It looks like I'm inside of this program. So that's kind of why I have it. But sometimes I need this spot, which actually it's off by a little bit, but I'll fix that later. But sometimes I need that bottom right so I can get rid of it and show what's down there. Sometimes plots or graphs show up here, and then I just kind of put myself up there. Something definitely happened where the crop's slightly off, but you get the idea. And that's why I have various um, scenes. This is for our tutorials especially, because I do them frequently. So I don't really use a whole lot of any other um, scenes except for this one where I can turn myself on and off and move myself up and down. And I can zoom, so I want it to be the, the ability to zoom in on, on certain things, which zoom in is okay. So if I open up a project, I can zoom in on the code itself. All right, so let's take this scene and let's just call it, um, let's do a duplicate. So I'm gonna duplicate the scene. It's gonna ask me what I want for my scene collection to be called. I'm gonna call it example scene. This is for this particular recording, so. So now it's under, if you click on scene collection, it's under example scene. I can mess with these things. So I wanna show you a couple things, right? First, I don't really need this R tutorial on here. Let's get rid of that, right? So gone. They're just me. Now we're on just me, that's fun. Uh, we also want the left monitor so you can see my OBS. All right, so what I wanna show you is a little th thing that sucks about OBS until you find the shortcut. So let's say I wanted to call this audio only. I wanna call it something different, right? Now when I click on it, you can't see what I'm doing. So let's do it with this left monitor. So you're looking at the left monitor with me up there in the top right, and I wanna change the name of it to just say um, left screen instead. So you would right click on it and you'd go to uh, change name or rename. And normally you would say, you know, left screen and watch what happens. I hope that it stays put, but you'll see something happen here. I hit enter and it didn't do anything. Well, that's painful. So let's try left screen and do a tab instead or click out of it. So I click out, you can notice it. But on OBS, somehow the bottom one just became left screen. So, well, I lost you guys because I made that change. And that's what I wanted to show you how to fix. All right, so we're back on it. So this is what I wanted to show you how to fix. You can see there's two left screens. I can't click on the other one because it's, it's actually empty um, and you won't be able to hear me or see me. So I can't click off of it when I'm showing you here. But that did happen and that will happen. I have a Mac running Catalina and this is OBS, the latest version, I think version 25 something. Um, so what you want to do, so this is my left screen and I want to call it that, but my, the one below that is not called left screen. I'm gonna uh, change this name again. Instead of left screen, I'm gonna call it, because now it's now left screen is taken up by that other scene. So now I'm gonna call it example name change, right? And I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna hold command and hit enter. Then it works. It's a really subtle thing, but the fact that your your scenes will completely change when you rename them is very frustrating. So this is a uh, solution for that. That's really the main thing I wanted to show you. This is just an example scene. So let's go ahead. I, I showed you how to um, duplicate and rename the scene. So it's now example scene. You can export the scene to any directory you'd like. So click on scene and then export and you see the screen pops up and you literally just export it and then you import it the same way. So scenes are something you wanna export for sure, but then there's also profiles. So if you see profile here, I have the same thing. It's all, mine is all uh, grayed out because I'm in the middle of recording right now. But you can't change your profile in the middle of recording, I don't think. Um, but if you're live, you might be able to. I'm not 100% sure on that. But you can see it's similar to the scenes, except it's uh, I have a Facebook Live, a YouTube with multiple channels and R tutorials. Now, I can't stream to multiple places at once, but I can have the settings remember my stream keys and things like that, including all of my actual settings. So the profile saves all of your settings and the scenes, oh, I don't have a full screen here. So let's, let me go back to my YouTube tech and I'll go to me, full screen. All right, so the difference between scene collection and profile. Scene collection is just that, scenes and devices. It works great, especially if your OBS crashes and you wanna bring it up again without having to redo everything, all your sources, devices, chroma keys, all of those scene type settings will be stored. So export them somewhere. I export them to my external hard drive. So if things crash, I can just 
re-download OBS, we're good to go. Now, you can't just take that scene collection and take it to your friend's house and expect it to be the same because you have different monitors, different displays, different everything. So it doesn't work quite that good. So, uh, But the profiles, again, if you want to have multiple settings, so when I click on the actual settings down here, this right here, that's where all of those settings, whatever you set them to, the stream, your, your server, your output, your bit rates, all of that, is your profile so you want to save your profiles as well so again you can see the same type of entries you have new duplicate rename remove import and export so i definitely recommend you doing that that'll save you a lot of trouble in the end plus switching between streams live uh live facebook versus youtube versus twitch it saves you a lot of a lot of hassle so that's really the gist of it i wanted to give you guys those tips especially the change in the name of a of a scene try it it's it's a little frustrating. Remember, hold command and hit enter and you're good to go. Everything will work like a champ. That's it. So I do put out tips and tricks often. I'm gonna try to tailor them all to streaming live, OBS, camera gear, that type of stuff. And then of course on the same channel, I'll have a lot of Final Cut Pro and editing tips so that you can create content for online consumers to consume your content. I've got a challenge for you. My challenge to you, which I haven't done myself, is to create more than you consume in one day. So here's the challenge to you is to, you might watch this video and say, oh, I've learned something. Okay, you've learned something, but don't watch 10 more videos. Create more videos than what you've consumed. If this is a 10 minute video, create something over 10 minutes long that you can push for somebody else to actually learn something from. That's my uh, challenge to you. Again, subscribe if you're interested in more tips and tricks about OBS and live streaming content creation and share this as well. I'll, I'll see you guys later.